Well, I'd like to visit the moon On a rocket ship high in the air Yes, I'd like to visit the moon But I don't think I'd like to live there Though I'd like to look down at the earth from above I would miss all the places and people I love So although I might like it for one afternoon I don't want to live on the moon Welcome to A Thousand Books Before Kindergarten Storytime. I'm Lisa Springer, Children's Librarian at the Kate Waller Barrett Branch of the Alexandria Library, and this is my friend Alligator. Ally is the symbol of our program, and we'd like to remind you that the books we read here count towards your thousand books before kindergarten, and in June, July, and August, they count towards Summer Quest. If you don't have a Summer Quest game sheet or a thousand books before kindergarten game sheet, or you'd like to do the program on computer or your tablet or your smartphone, go to our website or visit one of our branches, and we'll be happy to help you with that. You know, Allie, I'm wearing a special hat today. Have you ever seen a hat like this before? It's an astronaut's hat. Do you know why I'm wearing it? Because on July 20th, 1969, men first landed on the moon, and I got to watch it on TV. Yeah, really. I was a very, very little girl then, and my parents let me stay up late at night to watch the first lunar landing. So today, we have books about the moon and a little bit of outer space yoga. Are you ready to do that with me? Let's have a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Here we go. If you love vehicles, you will love this book series by Tony Mitten and Ann Parker. This book in the series is called Roaring Rockets. Roaring Rockets by Tony. Roaring Rockets by Tony Mitten and Aunt Parker. Wow! Rockets have power. They rise and roar. This rocket's ready. Wow! Rockets love power. They rise and roar. This rocket's want. Wow! Rockets have power. They rise and roar. This rocket's waiting, ready to soar. Oh, they've got their spacesuits. And inside, that's the lunar lander. Rockets carry astronauts with cool white suits, oxygen helmets, and gravity boots. The countdown is finishing. Three, two, one, action, blast off. The journey's begun. Rockets have fuel in great big tanks. When they are empty, they drop away. Thanks. Up in space, you're really light. Yeah, no gravity. So astronauts need to buckle up tight. You have to have things to grab onto and hang onto because in space you have no weight. You float through the air if you're not strapped down. Rockets go far. Through space they zoom, reaching as far as the big round moon. Down comes the lander with legs out ready and fiery boosters to hold it steady. They're landing. Out come the astronauts to plant their flag and scoop up samples in their moon rock bag. Oh, look how light they are on the moon. They're jumping around going boing, boing, boing. Because they don't weigh much on the moon. Rockets explore. Through space they roam. Whizz. And when they're done, they head back home. Back to the Earth. Rockets re-enter in a fiery flash to land in the sea with a sizzling splash.
crash. Helicopter carries the brave crew away. Three cheers for the astronauts. Hip, hip, hooray. Now they're going home. In the back of this book, it shows you the rocket parts. There's their lunar lander and their oxygen helmets. There's their gravity boots and their fuel tanks and the command module. That's the front part of the spaceship. This is an old fashioned spaceship. Nowadays our ship. In the back of this book, it shows you some of the things that you saw in the book and explains about gravity boots and oxygen helmets and the command module. Lots of little bits of information. We have lots of books in the nonfiction about space and astronauts, by the way, if you like that. But this one is Roaring Rockets by Tony Mitten and Ann Parker. And you can find it with a whole lot of other books by Tony Mitten right here at the Alexandria Library. This is Lori Berkner's rocket ship Ruff with a little bit of yoga added. Namaste. We're going to start down here in rocket pose. Get ready to jump. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Another rocket ship run. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Another rocket ship run. Take me to the sun. Take me to the sun. When I get there, I'll go spinning through the air, spinning round the sun. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Another rocket ship run. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Another rocket ship run. Take me to the moon. Take me to the moon. When I get there, I'll go dancing through the air, dancing on the moon. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Another rocket ship run. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Another rocket ship run. Take me to the stars. Take me to the stars. When I get there, I'll go jumping through the air, jumping from star to star. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Another rocket ship run. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Another rocket ship run. Take me to the earth. Take me to the earth. When I get there, I'll be home. Da, da. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Another rocket ship run. Well done, everybody. Namaste. Do you know what the word fragile means? It means something that can get damaged very easily. And in this case, something that can get torn very easily. So you won't find this book on the shelf at the Alexandria Library, but it is a beautiful book by Eric Carle. And I love sharing it with you here. And of course, it's story time at the library. Papa, please get the moon for me by Eric Carle. So, Papa got a very long ladder.
he carried the very long ladder towards a very high mountain. Then Papa put the very long ladder on top of the very high mountain. Can you see Papa now? Where is he? He's all the way up there. And up and up and up he climbed. Can you see Papa now? He's down at the bottom of the page. This is a very big page. Finally, Papa got to the moon. My daughter Monica would like to play with you, said Papa, but you are much too big. Every night, I get a little smaller, said the moon. When I am just the right size, you can take me with you. And indeed, the moon got smaller and smaller and smaller. And when the moon was just the right size, Papa took it. Down and down and down he climbed. Can you see him? He's down there holding the moon. Here, said Papa to Monica, I have the moon for you. Monica jumped and danced with the moon. She hugged the moon and threw it into the air. But the moon kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And finally, it disappeared altogether. Then one night, Monica saw a thin sliver of moon reappear. See it? Yeah. It's a tiny little moon. Each night the moon grew and grew and grew and grew. It's a beautiful full moon, isn't it? Of course, you really can't take the moon. But the moon really does seem to get bigger and smaller in the sky if you watch it at night. And that's Papa, Please Get the Moon for Me by Eric Carle. And while you can't find this book at the Alexandria Library, you can find lots of other books by Eric Carle and lots of books about the moon. It's time to say goodbye, Allie. No, but we'll be back next week. Meanwhile, you can come and visit our libraries and find books about astronauts, books about the moon, books about space. We have so many different kinds of books at the library, and we hope we'll be seeing you there soon. Thank you so much for watching. We love you. Bye. Though I'd like to look down at the earth from above, I would miss all the places and people I love. So although I may go, I'll be coming home soon. Cause I don't want to live on the moon No, I don't want to live on the moon